Uh, Slim the Lobster, you're, uh, you're, you're all over the news right now. Let's talk about what's going on. Oh, man. Nothing like the, 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 the rat-ass nigga Fetty said, man. You know what I mean? Just being him. Yep. Yeah. You know? So, so what, what is actually the issue with both of y'all? Well, my, this is my, my issue is the first thing is I, I appreciate a real no over a fake yeah any day. You see what I'm saying? And I say that to say it was a situation where I was supposed to fuck with the dude, you know what I'm saying? And I got in trouble, you know what I'm saying? Which this really has nothing to do with him, but you know, if I'm a young nigga and I see another young nigga trying to come up and I'm in the position to help you, not only am I in the position to help you, but I tell you that I'm going to help you. You see what I'm saying? And when you tell somebody something, you only, it's not about the, the money, it's only about a man's word. You know what I mean? So I had a situation, got in trouble, and I didn't want to tell Dre. The only nigga that I could tell without telling Dre was him. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, man, I got you, nigga. I got a lawyer for all this. I got lawyers for this. And it was a whole story about all the lawyers. And, it, and to me, it was no different than when he had a situation with Floyd Mayweather about his money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you can have a million dollars right here and tell me, oh, I'm going to give you a 100000 and you niggas just, that's willing, you will fight that or afford that. You know what I'm saying? So, that that was cool. He left a nigga hanging. I wound up telling Dre. Dre being the nigga he is, of course. He didn't say shit. He helped me. You know what I mean? A real nigga shit. So, I take that. Like, boom, no problem. So then, a song comes out that I actually created everything about the song. The nigga even saying some of the words that I said in my verse on his shit. So then now I'm like, all right, now you, I'm not good enough to help out of a situation, but I'm good enough to use my music. So I, me being who I am, like I felt a way about that. Like, hold up, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the coldest part about that, I was like, all right, cool, whatever. I got a song called Gunplay. I tell the A&R for Interscope, hey, man, tell 50 I want him to get on the remix. He like, oh, cool, give me the song. I'm going to meet with 50, and I'll play the record. Before the dude even played the record, he told him, well, you could tell him I'm not helping nobody that signed the drink. <laughs> now I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what that got to do with anything, but you can put my music on your shit. And, like, it's just like, all right, cool. Like, fuck you. No, nothing. I didn't come. I'm not from that way of beat a nigga. Yeah, man. Um. How long have you been on Aftermath now? Like, uh, what what year did you originally get signed? I originally signed in 2009. 2009. Okay, you've been on there for... But you were kind of messing with them for a while before that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I was signed uh, uh, as a writer before that. Okay, well, what year were you uh, signed as a writer? Well, uh, 2007. Alright, so you've been you've been an aftermath for about five years now. Yeah, I was. You were. Well, I mean, it was it was a long stretch. I mean, you you put in your your work out there. I mean, and and that's, that's was, the one thing that really made it a, a kind of an issue is that if you pay attention, I put out war music on November ninth, two thousand eleven. Thirty days later, he put out. His, exactly 30 days, December 9th, 2011, he put out whatever the shit he put out. I forgot the name of it, right? But at that same time, when he put that out, he called some 
I think a dude named Barry at Interscope told him, oh, y'all, don't stop promoting Slim. He told him, well, that ain't Slim. That's Slim and Shaw Money. Hmm. Now, Felly Fell, a L.A. DJ, got the song with me and Dre called Back Against the Wall, right? Mysteriously, somebody from Interscope called Felly Fell and told him, stop playing my record. It wasn't nobody that worked at Aftermath that called and said, stop playing the record. That's strange. So who could that be? I feel you. I feel you. So, I mean, you guys are at odds at this point, is what it sounds like. Yeah. Now, and I, like I said, I told that nigga in his face he was full of shit. I told him in his face, bro. It wasn't no... Uh, behind his back, no none of that. So where was that? He, this was at at the studio with me, him, and Dre, and all that. Like, man, you with the bullshit? Like, really, man? Like, how I, I, I expect? Like, if 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 I'm in a position to help a nigga, and I'm telling you, and his whole thing was like, nigga, I'm gonna go door to door with you, nigga. Mm -hmm. He like Dre ain't gonna do this. They ain't gonna do that. And they and he was at, he was right about that. But at the same time, like, I, a nigga expect more from, I, I cherish a nigga by his word, not by his wealth. But what, what happened when you, uh, when you told 50 that in the studio? What was his reaction? He looked at me, he was like, oh, you only call me when you need something. <laughs> I started laughing, like, what the fuck, you, what, 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 am I, what am I supposed to call you? <laughs> What else am so I supposed to the, tell? There's something to do with Jimmy Iovine and, and something no, like that. What, Jimmy, what Jimmy Hitchman. You talking about Jimmy Hitchman? Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, okay. No. You're right. You're right. So the Jimmy Hitchman. Did you get named yeah. in that whole situation? Yeah, yeah. And if you if you Google Day 10 the Jimmy Hitchman trial, the first thing going to pop up is this is 50.com. That nigga's a rat. He's just a, he has a better way to rap. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you think for one second that that did make the motherfuckers in the company uncomfortable, you're out your rabbit ass mind. If you think for one second that that did make a nigga in Forbes magazine uncomfortable, you must be fucking crazy. I feel you, man. I feel you. Is there anything else you want to add before, before we let you go? Yeah, fuck 50 Cent. <laughs> All right, we're going gonna to end it like that, man. Flat TV exclusive, right. man. Slim the box. All right.